I went to Ganawagi. I went to the church where she's buried. So that's how close I came to, to touching Kadri Tekakwitha and placing my hand on her tomb. She was strong in her faith, and I think that that's why is an example for us um, not to give up. As a young person, she prayed all the time, and she seen crosses everywhere. She'd be walking, and she'd see crosses. And I've tried that too as I'm driving along the road, and it's amazing where you can see crosses. She is a First Nations person who really has all the qualities of sainthood and is on the verge of sainthood, is beatified and certainly a model for, for all peoples right now. A young woman of Algonquin and Mohawk ancestry also deserves special recognition today. Blessed Kateri Tekakwita, who has not heard of her outstanding witness of purity and holiness of life. It was my personal joy to beatify this woman of great courage and faith, who is known by many as the Lily of the Mohavsk, to those who came to Rome for her beatification. I said, Blessed Catherine stands before us as a symbol of the best of the heritage that is yours as North American Indians. Blessed Cattery was a Mohawk woman from what is now Quebec and New York State area of the land, but it was just Mohawk territory at that time. Her mother was Algonquin and her father was Mohawk. Because of smallpox, all her family died. And her uncle adopted her and he was a traditional person. She only knew her mother for maybe three or four years of her life, but her mother had instilled in her this great love and desire already for God. As she grew up, she was a very prayerful, devout, caring, gentle person, and um, was also instructed by the Jesuits and was received into the church. She ends up in Kahnawake, Quebec, and she lives a life of prayer, of love, of sacrifice, to the extent that she believes she's being called to live a life of virginity, to live a life of a religious. She wanted to start a community of women. She didn't really become a sister, but did make a vow of chastity. Apparently, I think that was in 1679, I believe. And she used to go into the bush and into the woods and just pray to Jesus and really believed in, in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She had a full, mature Catholic faith. And she wanted to know more about this Jesus who loved so much that he was willing to die. And she had already heard some of this from her mother. And so she receives the faith and lives a life of penance and suffering for the sake of others. She died on April of 1680, and she was only 24 years old. So for her to have had that amount of impact on people, not just her community, but eventually the whole nation, having lived only 24 years, puts her in a sense very much like uh, Sister Therese of Lisieux, who died at the same age, I believe. So in a sense, we have our own Catholic Christian counterpart to St. Therese of Lisieux. Along with a devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe, Kateri Tekakwitha is a saint to pray to for guidance in all aspects of life. 
to those who provide leadership to Aboriginal Catholic communities, she also provides inspiration as to how Catholic Aboriginals can remain true to their cultural backgrounds while living out their Christian faith. In terms of prayer, uh, asking her intercession would be to have her faith, her love and her compassion for people and uh, for the way she was able to express uh, her own Catholic faith in her own cultural way. She is a role model for everyone. Um, my daughter has designed her power outfit to be like Blessed Catteries. She's put a rosary on her shawl. And so when she's dancing, she's dancing with Blessed Kateri. When we pray to Kateri, you know, especially when we're sick, we get healed. And many, many different things you could pray to her. She's really, uh, I guess, saint. I ask her to walk with us on our journey, to bring the gift of faith to my people, which is what she did as she looked after the little children, brought love to the community, to the elders. It was already love there, but she brought a new dimension to that when she could bring the understanding of the love of Jesus, who was willing to sacrifice his life for others. So that's my sense of, of love, of dedication, of giving for the community.